Hello YouTube. So hey, you guys, I got something a little bit different for you all today. Um, for those who are looking to do maybe an upgrade on your Gen 1 first gen Toyota Sequoia suspension, I have a hack that I hope that most of you can really appreciate. So this hack is for those that have the limited option with the uh, on your Sequoia that have the integrated rear airbags already built in to your vehicle. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Ooh. So here's my rig. It's a 2006 Toyota Sequoia Limited 4x4. And as you can see, I upgraded with the Dobinson 3-inch suspension lift. I also put on the SPC upper control arms. And uh, my original plan was to delete the old OEM airbags and replace them with those Firestone airbags that you actually can put the nozzles on the back here on the, on the bumper. And hopefully this hack can show you guys a little bit of a different way of approaching it. So when I was replacing the old with the new, I noticed that my rear airbags actually let me show you guys real quick. My rear airbags actually fit really, really well into the diameter of the new Dobinson um, uh, coil levers. And it got me thinking, you know, why can't I just use the old system and that way I can inflate and deflate on demand instead of having to just to hook up the new airbags to a compressor when the time called for it. So this is actually when the light bulb idea went off. So unfortunately, if you've ever used your air ride system before in your, in your Sequoia, you notice that once the car gets to, I think it's 17 miles per hour, the airbag actually deflates and becomes useless at speed. Um, this was my first challenge. How do I keep the air in the rear at speed and not have it deflate? So I had to find a way to trick the computer so the deflate command at 17 miles per hour would not affect the pressure in the bag. And this is the hack that I was actually telling you guys about comes into play. So if you open up the hood and you go over here to the fuse box, let me get a little video here. One way to trick the computer on these things is to pull the fuse, right? So I got one of these little clips, as you can see here from um, Amazon, and all it really does is it um, replaces the fuse with a double pin that allows you to create a switch so you can turn this fuse bank on and off. So once I figured out that pulling that fuse out of the uh, fuse bank would disable the not only air ride suspension, but also the computer that would you know cause the airbag to deflate at, at speed, I wanted to keep this hack looking as stock and as easily accessible uh, as possible. So I added this switch, I can show you guys right here on the control panel. I added this switch and what this switch does is once you depress it, it turns the air ride suspension um, system on. And basically if you're pulled over and park, you can just press this button, turn the air ride suspension on, and you can inflate or deflate like you normally could. And once you're at pressure, or once you're at the, the height that you want, if you're taking on, you know, on a, a heavy load, all you do is you just turn that switch off, it enables the system, disables the system and uh, you're off to the races. So just to reiterate, this switch cuts the fuse circuit, thus disabling the air ride suspension. You can always tell the system is off when you see the, the MAN light blinking on your dash, right? So here's a good example. If I go ahead and I depress that switch, it completes the circuit and you can see I have the manual on right now. But if I click that, turn it off, I don't have that light on or indicating that I'm in the height control manual circuit. But if I want to go ahead and impress that, let me turn the car on real quick. So if I want to go ahead and depress that height control, I just press the button. I'm on manual now. And if you can hear, my air is pumping up right now. I want to fill it all the way up. All right. Uh, we're at top capacity. Go ahead and just flip the switch again, turn it off. And now I'm good to go and I'm on high and that will stay high um, throughout the rest of the trip. So it's important to note that the first time I drove the vehicle, the bags actually didn't have any air in them at all. And I got this really loud metal on metal clank and all it really was was this piece hitting the bottom here because I didn't have any air in the bag. So as soon as I added a bit of air and pulled the fuse, the gap went away and, and there is no more clank. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I'll be making a ton more videos on the Sequoia and the build, so please like and su subscribe. And until next time, have a good one.